everybody. Welcome to the Trader Merlin Show. It is your Tuesday afternoon edition. Lots of excitement and volatility out there today. Hopefully you had a great trading session. We'll talk about some trades. Uh, maybe talk about some trades I made. Talk about some that Mike made. And we'll talk about some uh, that we see maybe coming up here because there's a lot of action and potential trading opportunities, certainly as we get close to this November 3rd deadline. Hello, Terry, Ivzy, Jeff, Vernon, Tom, Big Eb, and Jorge. Good to see you guys with us as usual. Uh, my guest for today, no stranger to this show, actually was a regular on Power Trading Radio for quite some time and we'll maybe get him to be a regular on this one we've got mike mcmahon joining us today mike how are you doing hey i'm doing real fine there merlin how about you great good to have you back on everything going well in your world oh yeah 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 i mean we're all hunkered down covid wise but otherwise than that hey i'm pretty much of a homebody I'm pretty much self-sufficient here. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny. I got to share this with the group because uh, I'm going to be leaving on uh, the, the, I'm leave Friday, or Thursday night, so no show Friday or Monday again. I know, sorry guys, but I'm flying back east and I had to take a COVID test, so I went through this drive-through COVID test, and they basically with these tongs stuck a bag in my window. And they made I couldn't roll my window down the way, being super careful, and then like, okay, you have to administer your own test. I'm thinking. This is kind of weird. So I got to take this little stick, you know, and shove it into my brain cavity for a little. It was anyway self-administered. I thought that was kind of a unique one out there today. Glad, glad we don't all have to do it because it was a horrible experience. Um, all right, let's um, open this up, guys. I want to make sure you guys all understand this is a going to be Thank open to listener go. questions. Whoa! Being super careful, and then like, okay, you have a loop feedback loop there somewhere. Yeah, sorry, speakers are on. No worries. You gotta love the delay. <laughs> um, yeah, open question, guys. I got a bunch of them come in, so I thought it'd be great to have an experienced trader like Mike with me today. Let's um, let's start off, Mike, with a question that came in from Keith, and I will share this with the viewers out at home. Keith says IBM fell right into the lows of the sideways trend for the past few months. Just says buy time with a question mark. So Keith, uh, we will bring up that chart for you to take a peek at here. Uh, let's see, bring up Trade Station and Mike. I will bring up IBM. I don't know if you have it on your screen over there. I assume that you do. I've got a daily up. Uh, what's your What's your thoughts on this one? Because I mean, it it did have a pretty aggressive fall today off of earnings. Well, the whole thing is is that earnings are tomorrow, and uh, Kramer, Jim Kramer on CNBC, made some disparaging comments about IBM. And strangely enough, uh, my attitude is that whatever he says, I do the opposite of. Yeah, smart man. And uh, your viewer was right. I mean, it drops right into a real nice demand zone there, uh, down at the 115, 117s, and I went uh, along 120 Januaries. Okay. January 120, I think you're probably fine. Actually, earnings came out last night, so this was... so oh, he did it? So he gave the disparaging remarks because of earnings, which... You know, guys, you have to understand very, very clearly, especially for those of you who love the guy, Jim Cramer is edutainment at its best, right? He is there to be theatrical. He's there to be entertaining. He is also, you know, paid for by sponsors. So you got to be careful on what he's saying, who is influencing him. Remember, he used to work for a lot of major financial firms. And if you have the opportunity, if you think that maybe I'm being a little bit you know, mean <laughs> towards Mr. Kramer, just do yourself a favor one day and type in Jim Kramer manipulation and watch the video that comes up and you might have a totally different perspective of him uh, as you'll understand that he is using the media and all these social media platforms for his own agenda. It's very clear once you watch that video. So um, you were said you're going the opposite of a mic. It seems like I would, I would feel comfortable doing the same thing. Would you, let, let's take Jim Cramer out of the equation. Looking at IBM right now, Obviously, their earnings was you know not well received. They actually beat earnings expectations. They were supposed to make 255. They came out at 258. So right. that should have been nice. But it's also, as Keith pointed out, it looks like it's right down into these lows we've seen established for pretty much the last six eight months. Does that play into your going long decision? Uh, absolutely. Uh, like I said, uh, it's dropping right into a, a long support area and a current uh, demand zone. You know, and so I figured uh, I could go a little out of the money on this, still get a delta of fifty, and in three months, uh, uh, I think we're going to be above one twenty-five again. So I think it's a good. Uh, intermediate term play mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I am contrary to Kramer <laughs> <laughs> you and me both Mike it's funny because years ago I actually created a portfolio and the whole portfolio was basically I would run through his list where he'd like really say an emphatic bye 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 and we would use that as a short and 
I think it was 2006. I actually went and looked for this report because I'm a, a collector of all useless data and junk. Um, <laughs> I, I think we, I even presented to you. There was a, in 2006, a college did a study on his picks. And what was alarming was they said that after you watch his show, he does his buy, buy, buy or sell, sell, sell. And they were just going off the buy recommendations. 100%, 100% of all of the picks that he had said, all the gains were given back within like the next six or seven trading sessions. So it basically it jumps up quickly off of the, the sheeple buying into it, and then it just craters and gives it all back. But he's created, as you'll see in that video I talked about, he foments an impression by his uh, popularity. So yeah, if Jim Kramer's saying, saying sell IBM, I'm, I'm more looking to buy it too. My only concern, Mike, is when I look at this chart, everything is ripping. It seems to be like one of the best market environments we've seen in decades, yet IBM has done nothing for eight, six, eight months. That that kind of concerns me a little bit for the long-term outlook. Well, they were being bogged down, Merlin, uh, by their maintenance programs. And IBM is, you know, for the last decade, basically, has been one of the leaders in uh, artificial intelligence, AI. Mm -hmm. And that's where their forte is, I really believe. And so they just announced the, the spinoff of their maintenance, I think, at the end of September. And so as that divestiture comes about, uh, I think you're going to see a lot more money going into it. The other thing that has slowed IBM down is, of course, the COVID. There's been less and less CapEx spending. Mm -hmm. And if other companies aren't trying to put in Watson or whatever AI they have or cloud capabilities, then you know it's the there's no appreciation in the stock price. That's going to change. No. And you know uh, I think, like I said, as an intermediate term, uh, I'm willing to play an options bet on it. But for the long term, this company pays five percent dividend. Uh, it's not going anywhere. It's one of the <laughs> premier companies where they call it the unbreakable brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you know, I don't see as an investor or as a trader where I'm going wrong. Of course, I have my stops on it. Yeah, of course, <laughs> <laughs> would hope so. Yeah. Um, you know, interesting because you, you mentioned five percent dividend, and I think that's obviously one of the draws of IBM. Um, and you might actually be seeing this because right now you have a situation where. Um, the big banks are not allowed to pay dividends, right? They are prevented by the Fed. Feds, so you can't pay a dividend. So you, what you might get is actually some sell-off in financial stocks moving into some of the more stable, we'll call them blue chip stocks that are paying a dividend. And IBM may be a beneficiary from that. We'll, we'll see. That's just a hypothesis I have because uh, bank stocks not allowed to pay dividends right now. Kind of interesting. Well, I think that's a working theory, not yep. just a hypothesis. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I'm all, I haven't seen it happen too effectively though, but uh, you know, at least you know that money's going to be coming out of those bank stocks if anybody's chasing yield. All Absolutely. Right. I mean, come on. Uh, we're at less than 1% inflation right now, which means you're getting a full 4% in dividend clearance. Yeah. No, you know, no. so it's that's not bad. You can't get that at a bank. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, all right, let's move on. We've got, uh, let's see, that was the one from Keith asking about IBM falling into its demand zones. I, I think it's buy time. I, I, I think you're probably best to do something like what Mike has done, which is you know maybe use options so you don't put up as much capital and you might get a bigger bang for your buck. But keep keep in mind it's been bouncing along that level for quite some time. And uh, like I always like to point out, it's kind of like a piece of concrete. The more you chip away at that level, the more likely it is going to break. So still looking okay at this point, but you got to make sure you have a stop loss in place there. All right, uh, let's see. Our next question comes from Marshall. Marshall says, what are your thoughts on alternative energy ETFs? Mike, this is one of those industries and sectors we've seen just go absolutely gangbusters, which may be foreshadowing a particular political party uh, winning an election. But uh, what are your takes on alternative energy at this point? Well, clearly, I think people are starting to see the writing on the wall that uh, fossil fuels and climate change or climate uh, global warming, whichever you want to call it, is being uh, affected by us humans. And you know, alternative energy sources, renewable energy sources, have to be the wave of the future, or as they say, it's existential. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that means we are going to be extinct. <laughs> okay, for people who don't know what existential means. At any rate, uh, <laughs> you know, I I'm following things like uh, uh, the solar ETF, TAN, 
Okay, uh, it's had an incredible run. I don't know that it's a buy right here, but as you suggested, Biden has a pretty good, and I don't want to call it the green plan because everybody gets all upset, uh, but his his forecast, his view of the future is kind of in sync with mine, uh, that we've got to get rid of the petroleum base and go that way. Additionally, I'm also, uh, I took some leaps, believe it or not, in uh, fuel cell, mm-hmm. okay, some uh, 2022 leaps, and it's trading down around three, five dollars. What is it trading? Hang on a second. On which, what, what symbol? Fuel cell, fuel cell, F-C-E-L. Yep. That's it's a two thirty. Two dollars thirty cents today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, you know I've I've taken some. These aren't trades, people. That's a long These are what I call gambles or hobbies. Okay, one of the famous one was Arrowhead Research, which I bought a thousand shares at thirty six cents. <laughs> and Arrowhead Research is now trading at about forty-five dollars. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping you're still holding it, Mike. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got out at seventeen, like an idiot, oh. and made a made a nice plug there. But it just kept going up and up and up. And that was only because I was interested in nanotechnology. So by owning that stock, I had to keep paying attention to that sector. Anyway, back to the alternative energy. Uh, again. Uh, I hate to say it, but the Republicans, the the current administration is going to gut OSHA, the EPA. Um, They're still going in uh, coal. My God, come on, people. (laughs) Give the miners a break. (laughs) Hey, it's jobs, Mike. It's jobs. Well, so is, uh, you know, working at a 7-Eleven or uh, working on a farm. You can find jobs. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, I actually brought up coal. Or this is the Vanex Coal ETF, and I, I just wanted to bring this one up because I've got a monthly up here, guys, so you know the time frame is, is pretty different. Um, we had looked at this one back when Trump and Clinton were going through the, the previous election, and it, the portfolio that we made, we built out, was actually uh, going long coal stocks. And you can see that for a little bit of time, uh, I'll put the, a marker during the election period, so we'll go back to uh, November of 2016. Uh, you can see it actually did fairly well. Went from about on KOL, we'll call it 133, all the way up to a high of about 184. So you know, fifty dollar move up. Uh, but since then, it's given back all those gains, and I think that that's because at the beginning, and this is why it's so important to listen to what these guys are saying. Um, Trump was very pro coal. He made it very clear he's going to fire up these, you know, these these mines that have been uh, shutting down and dormant and bring them back online. And while there may have been optimism, it seems to me that it has uh, waned right now because it dropped all the way back down to 60 bucks. So uh, Mike, uh, not Mike, um, Larry Jacobson and I will be doing a webinar on Thursday where we're actually going to be looking at the um, political parties. We'll go Democrat, Republican and look at what historically they have done uh, in sectors and industries as well as, you know, obviously what our current candidates are going to do or say they're going to do for the markets going forward. That'll be next Thursday. I'll let you guys know about that next week. Um, but yeah, I wanted to bring up coal because I agree with you. I, I, I think industries like coal or clean coal, which is a total oxymoron. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's, it's like an oil-free pizza. It just doesn't happen. It's not, not possible. Um, you know, these types of, of plays, I think, have a lot of merit, but you have to also be careful because even though one candidate will say something, it could completely go the opposite direction. So while I agree with Mike, um, right now, if you're looking at it, Biden has made it pretty clear. He's looking at alternative energy. And let me bring up a list of different ETFs for you guys just so you have an idea of how crazy this industry and sector has gotten. And this is a monthly time frame. Here's Plug Power. Uh, Plug Power is not an ETF. It's, it's uh, basically hydrogen fuel cells. And, of course, because a lot of companies have been talking about going fuel cells, it's moved from $4 all the way up to like $19 in the last six months. Pretty impressive run. You also have BE, which is Bloom Energy. They do oxide fuel cells. It hasn't been around as long, but obviously a huge run up as well from just uh, in about that same period of time. We're looking at a low of about 3 bucks. It recently peaked out just a couple weeks ago at uh, $23. Now, some of the major ECFs, which are much more diversified, ICLN, for those of you who might be interested, look at the move. I mean, from 2014, 15, 16, 17, didn't do much. 18 and started to move up. 19 moved up a little bit. And all of a sudden, 2020 has been the year of ICLN. And 
I can't help but to question, is this people positioning themselves for a, a Biden victory? And of course, you know, it's, it's too soon to tell. As you guys might remember, going into election night in 2016, Hillary Clinton had an 84% <coughs> chance of winning, and she lost. So uh, I, I'm not going to put all my eggs in that basket, but it seems pretty clear that people are positive on uh, clean energy. That's ICLN. Here is uh, QLCN, which is the NASDAQ one. Similar picture. Oh, it should be. Did I put it in wrong? Uh, oh, QCLN, excuse me. QCLN. you got to be able to type. Right? <laughs> I, just, I have dyslexia when it comes to my C's and L's. Uh, how about PBW? There's another one. These are all ETFs that represent, this is clean energy. This is, uh, I believe, uh, fan is wind, right? So you have uh, wind yep. energy, also just soaring. And then as Mike mentioned, there's TAN. Um, I'm very optimistic. I think you're going to see tons of money and subsidies pour into these markets, Mike. I just, I, I just can't see jumping in right now. It seems like it's gotten way well, overdone. I, I want, <clears throat> one of the comments I'd like you to do is uh, put all a couple of them on dailies, and notice how they've all gone flat in a holding pattern to see just who does win. <laughs> okay, and so we have a rally base forming. Will it be a rally base drop or a rally base rally? And that's going to be, unfortunately, politically bound. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there there was a, um, a comment that I saw come through a couple days ago um, asking about this specific one. I didn't get to it. But, you guys, if you look at this chart here, uh, the question, I can't remember who sent it in, but I remember the question was, do you see a bullish flag on TAN? And uh, if you guys – uh-oh. I think I, I just lost Mike, so um, bear with me as I try to call him back here and see why that just disappeared. Um, but as I do that, you guys see there's a bullish flag. It looks like it's formed right here. If we go through these highs and back through these lows, a bullish flag on TAN. So if you're, if you're a pattern person, this is extremely positive for something like TAN because it's broken to the upside. In theory, if you are a practitioner of technical analysis, this should move that same distance, unfortunately I can't get it to do it because it's the way these trade station charts work, it should move up to about that price level based off of these numbers, which would be a price target of 97.50. I think that's a little lofty, my friends, but anyway, I just wanted to show you that one because someone asked me about the, the uh, bullish flag formation. All right, well, real quick, let me see if I can, sorry for the phone ring here. Oh God, that's terrible. It's all gonna come through my microphone and hopefully I get to, uh, Hello. There you are. You back, Mike? <laughs> the beauty of technology. Uh, I think you just got to change your uh, your microphone, Mike, because I can hear you. Good. Okay, cool. There you go. Okay, uh, let's see. What else we got? So that was um, alternative. Hey, what do you guys think of alternative energy? Are you guys pretty much uh, are, are you all on board with that one? Is it sounds like I am back. You you are back. I am. I fortunately had a coughing spell and my hand was on the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's my COVID test got you all inspired, huh? <laughs> what did I tell you? There's a drive-through right down the street. Uh, yeah, Richard says you lost solar power. Yeah, Mike's Mike's on a dial-up connection over there. It happens, you know. These old guys they don't want to pay for high-speed internet. <laughs> um, I, I got my two cans and a string. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> they work well. They work well. Let's go to another question here. Uh, this is going to be one that comes in from Allison. She asks, uh, "I've been holding UPS for a few months now, and I'm lost as as to when to sell." Any help would be appreciated. Uh, let me just say before I even look at the chart, congrats, Allison, because you've been in UPS for a few months. UPS has been on absolute fire. I'll bring up UPS here. Um, there you go. Going back to our March lows, we were down sub 90. The low point you saw this year was in March 12th. Uh, on March 12th, and the low was 82 bucks. It's currently at 174. So you're talking a hundred dollar gain per share of UPS. So if you've held it for a few months, you're doing very, very well. Uh, what's your take on UPS, Mike? Well, once again, uh, the COVID has forced everybody to get online and order stuff, which means companies like PayPal and Square are doing well. But it's the delivery services of FedEx and UPS that I've had my eye on for a long time. 
One of the things that really is telling about all this is the Dow Jones Transport Index, and it's just skyrocketing right now. Uh, both FedEx and UPS said that they're at capacity, and Zacks has uh, UPS earnings next uh, Wednesday, the 28th. So uh, I'm long UPS. Uh, I had about uh, 20 contracts, and as it's been going up, I've been taking money off the table uh, because it is getting a little frightfully yeah. high. Uh, but I'm actually looking for $185. I'm long 165 Januarys. Okay, I'm bringing out a UPS. Um, yeah, and if it, you know, if you're in it. I think you, you stay in it. I think it looks great at this point, but for Allison, you know, this is, we've had this question from a lot of viewers over this last week. I think it's particularly yesterday. I remember seeing a few asking about, you know, giving back profits and when do you take your profits? You know, depending on what your, what average price you're in, my guess is you're up significantly. So I would be moving my hard stop up. I don't know if I'd be using a trailing stop. I'd be using a hard stop. Uh, and in my stop loss right now, I'd be moved up below, just below 170. I'd probably say like 169.50 would probably be enough for me. That's letting this thing move about $5 against, you know, off the highs. But, you know, you, you certainly want to lock in those profits and that's just how I would approach it. Um, I think that some others might be a little more lax and expect to get the bigger move. I just want to make sure I don't give a lot of money back. And, and I agree with Mike. This has been an industry that has just been booming because of on uh, online delivery. I'm going to ask the viewers out at home. This is kind of interesting. Um, Raj says FedEx looked the same. FedEx might even look better. I mean, FedEx is just incredible. Uh, here's a weird one, Mike. I, I do a lot of, of home delivery. I'm an Amazon guy. But I noticed, <laughs> I noticed this really weird van parked right in front of my house yesterday and so I, I was outside with the dog and I just I walked by this van I, this looks really weird this guy's got the trunk open and the back uh, sliding doors this van open and he's like walking back and forth and he like walking to people's doorsteps and what the hell is going on and he turns out he had a UPS vest on it's basically think of what Uber's done for taxis right like now you you can be an Uber driver I can be an Uber driver now it used to be the the big brown van came around right that poop right. brown <laughs> UPS van drove around now, I think that what's happening is they're, they're so overburdened that they're literally calling people say, hey, do you have a car? Can you deliver packages for us? Here, here's a vest and here's your route. Because this guy was delivering UPS packages. And I saw someone similar doing for FedEx the other day. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> a package lift? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at the demand. I mean, you look at this price chart of FedEx. It, it's clear that uh, business is absolutely booming. And, you know, I, I don't know what the layoff situation looks like right there. But, uh, you know. Well, there's no layoff. Like I say, they're at capacity. Right. They're, they're actually worried about Christmas and not being able to deliver on time. Joseph says blue Amazon vans. Yeah, it's but it's not even that, Joseph. It's literally people in their car. This guy drove up. I'm, I'm in my garage working out the other day. And this guy rolls up, and he's, I forgot the car, but it, it, he opens the trunk, and he's pulling out stuff. It was like a, a Mercedes. And he's pulling <laughs> packages out of his trunk, and he's like, Merlin? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, here, so you have to scan for this. I'm like, what? This is really weird. Um, and I think that's just a sign of how, how in demand those services are. So um, I'm definitely bullish on it, but uh, for Allison, I certainly would not want you to give your money back at this point. So make sure you do some good risk management there and, and, and lock it in. You know, you could also be you could also be selling. I gotta get Carol out on that. She has a Rav Four. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Tom. This is hilarious. So you know, I, I I was joking, but I think it's almost serious. Like he, Tom says, Uber, Uber Eats, and now Uber Parcels. I it would not surprise me at all to see. Yeah, people delivering their own vehicles. Uh, yeah, nuts. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, this will be UPS, huh? Uber parcels service. Why? It just caught me off guard, you know, because this guy walks up to me and he's like, Merlin? I'm like, yes. It's like, here's a package for you. You have to scan. I'm like, you just took it out of your trunk, man. I don't know. <laughs> Last time I was buying, like, I remember buying a stereo when I was in my 20s in a parking lot from a guy in a van, you know. I'm like, okay, I know that's shady, but you're coming right to my door now. This is weird. <laughs> Yeah, Raj says sell half and hold half. You know, there's any any number of different ways you can go about that position, Allison. Um, you know, it's really what fits best for you. Sometimes you get that gut feeling and you say, hey, it's had a big run. You know, we're going into an extremely busy delivery time. You have Amazon Prime Day, which is Amazon's going to be at maximum capacity trying to get all those orders out. You have um, Black Friday coming up, so online you can have all the digital days. 
and then you have the holiday shopping. So I think you're probably good through the end of the year, unless it got a little bit uh, overdone here. But I think these companies are going to do rather well. Well, I'm waiting till earnings, and uh, what can I tell you? <laughs> I've been every time a contract goes up, my day trader comes out and me, and I start making. Uh, eight hundred dollars on one car. I take the money. <laughs> yeah. So I said I started with twenty. Uh, I scale in and then I scale out, and uh, uh, I'm down to five contracts now. So it, uh, they're they're waiting on next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, I'm eagerly awaiting it too. Uh, let's see. This is from Tom. Tom, saw, Tom says, is the daily chart of Pfizer a good example of an ascending triangle? Okay. Uh, if so, how would you trade it? Well, I have not looked at Pfizer. Let me bring up PFE. No, I can't trade Pfizer because it's a drug stock. Uh, Mike, I'll, I'll let you take first stab at that one. Um, are, you, are you a pattern guy? Do you like look for ascending triangles, descending triangles, that sort of thing? Well, I do and I don't. Okay, I'm, I'm more into the candle structure itself rather than the actual pattern it makes. Okay, so first off, uh, from a moment of disclosure, I'm long Pfizer. Okay. Uh, I'm long it in the stock and in options right now. Uh, the long stock is uh, for the vaccine play, the COVID play in this, and uh, I'm playing uh, it short right at the moment, okay, at the 39. And so, as you can see, I'm in the money a little bit. Um, it, uh, so I'm going both directions on Pfizer, um, short with options and long-term hold. It pays a okay dividend, nothing great shakes. Um, but at the same moment, uh, you know, it's uh, the COVID play in it is very strong. Now, as far as a what do you say? A triangle? An ascending triangle, yeah. An ascending triangle. I don't see it. Uh, well, look at the screen here. I actually just drew it out. Um, I... oh, oh, you're real long term. Okay. Oh, I'm yeah. Going. Yeah, this is daily. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I... On, I'm on daily too, but I'm kind of zoomed in. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what time frame. I was just kind of looking for first triangle I could find. And I mean, I have to say. Yeah. Yep. That's a hell of a triangle. You got a flat top and a series of higher lows, certainly true. Now, and you know what's interesting is, you know, Mike said he's playing it short from 39. It's a perfect place to play it short from, right? You guys can see that the the peaks there and I'm and I'm cutting them off a little bit, but it's right around that $39 mark. So, um, you know, Pfizer's looking great here off those March lows. You've got a great uptrend which is a series of higher highs. Uh, sorry, higher lows. That's the most important part. The lows are in control. The thing is it hasn't really made a higher high since March. So, What's uh, what we kind of have to wait for is does this upward trend line that I drew across the lows does that hold? And if it does, what will end up happening is Pfizer will break through that 39 and it'll probably rip to the upside once it does break through it. That's just typical, you know, uh, historical pattern analysis. But yeah, I actually, um, Tom, I, I like this ascending triangle on Pfizer. We could probably step back to, let's say, a weekly and maybe see a little different picture. Yeah, it's still there. Still looking pretty good. There. It's a sign yeah. of strength. It is. It uh, of course I just my habits just don't allow me to look back that far in the <laughs> picture. Uh, that's that's investor thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's um, you know you got to look at things from different perspectives, and that's why I love having you know people like you on, Mike. Is you you bring in your little your salt. You know how you flavor the markets is going to be a little yep. bit different than other people. So, um, you know, there, there's always different ways to skin that cat. Uh, you know, that actually was a question that came through here. So let me read this one. And I think Jeff is with us. He's one of the regulars. Um, he was asking about candles and patterns and formation. So uh, I'll give you just the, I'll read the email real quick, but maybe you can give me your take on it. Um, he's asking for, you know, easy ways to identify engulfing candles, hammers, spinning tops, which I will get through in another session. We won't do that right now. Um, he says, and the biggest question is, where to get in a trade? Rarely does price just leave a zone and then zigzags away, stopping you out in the process. Now, how many times do you get back in or don't get back in? So let me ask you, Mike, when you look at something like that, where you have a pattern, and, and you probably have some patterns or formations that you like. Um, oh, hammers and uh, shooting stars. Okay, yeah, you're like me. Those are my two yeah. favorites. Um, you know, when you have those types of formations, 
yeah, I have specific rules that I use for shooting stars and hammers. But you know, it's a great question by Jeff. Is he's probably getting frustrated? Is maybe he found a hammer formation. He's buying the breakout above the high of that candle, that specific candle, uh, and then it just comes and zigs back down and takes him out. Are there are there specific rules that you have maybe for trading breakouts like that? Well, first let's do just a short piece of philosophy here. If you're a trader, your job is to buy and sell and sell and buy and buy and sell, not to buy, hold, and hope. <laughs> okay? So if, if you've got yourself a great, and we'll say a hammer, demand zone, and the thing goes through and you get hit for a small stop, most people think it's a loss, it's bad, it's evil, they feel bad about themselves, and they miss the return fight up back up. The trick is is that you've got to give a trade a couple of chances. Mm -hmm. So once it breaks the stop, I, my automatic rule is is that it has now. I take a number three confirmation entry and buy above the high of that hammer in this case that we're talking about. Okay, but of course on a hammer, if I'm like on a daily or an hourly, I'll be buying it as soon as I start to see the bottom tail starting to form. Okay, and then I'll put my stop just short of the tail or just under the tail, and uh, if I get stopped out, so be it. And if it goes back up and it breaks above, I'm long, and generally the market will throw you head fakes, mm -hmm. and that's that's how the pros make their money is by jumping people in and then taking it off the table for them. These people are professional pickpockets, for gosh sakes. <laughs> that they are. Um, you know, on that note, you know, here is this is the symbol we were looking at yesterday, guys. Remember, we I was uh, we were walking through different scans and filters, and one of the, the symbols we looked at yesterday was uh, Autodesk because it had just this gigantic shooting star formation. And I said, look, here's the rules and how you would trade that one. And, and this one actually did come to fruition. It had a pretty nice red candle out there today. Uh, yep. One that's ready for tomorrow. It's really the only hammer that I've seen on a daily on um, the S&P 500 stocks so far is EOG, um, which is EOG Resources. And you know, there's there's a little hammer formation, right? So today on the daily candle, um, you know, how are we gonna trade that one? My rules are fairly simple. You know, Mike's might be slightly different, but here's mine. I'll snap it right to the top of that triangle or to the um, hammer formation. That's 3661. So if it opens up anywhere down below 3661 and then rallies up through 3661 to the upside, then it's a potential long trade for me. And that's just one simple step that I'm doing to help remove indecision um, from the equation. I'm trying to just have rules in place so I don't screw myself over by jumping and, and shooting from the hip. Well, you know, the, the only thing I would kind of talk about on that one is that if you go to an hourly, okay, on that, you're not really seeing a hammer. Right. Alrighty. Uh, it's uh, only on the daily. And you're really not dipping far enough back on 10.5 to pick up the rally base rally. I guess you are if you go to the very bottom of the tail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess you're right. Yeah, if it uh, breaks back down to around 35, 46 and starts coming back up, I would probably be a buyer too. How's that? There you go. Well, mine is, and this is what I love about this, Mike, is that it, mine is simple. Mine's not so much looking at those other variables. Obviously, we want to make sure that whatever demand zone that this tail might go into is strong. But if it's not, that's why you set these rules. Because if you don't have a if you don't have a tail into a strong demand zone, then most likely it's not going to follow through with the momentum to the upside. So that's why I put that rule that it has to open below that the top of the hammer and then rip through it to the upside. So, got it. And everybody out there listen to this because if you don't plan when it actually does rip up you're not going to react fast enough hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay you know now you can put a Condition. you know a, a stop a stop limit in there that is it breaks out you you get hit but in reality, most people are going to sit there and watch and they go, oh my God, it's tripping up and I just left 50 cents on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. A share, per share. <laughs> per share, yeah. yeah. Um, nice. All right, uh, Mike, tell me a little bit about what you're doing. I, I haven't talked to you very recently. I know you're doing a lot in masterminds. What, uh, what do you got going on? Well, I still run a, a mastermind class uh, for the OTA students. Uh, 
on Thursdays, and it's uh, what we call a deep dive, and we go into just about everything you can imagine except politics. I have some sweet. So you get into religion and transgenders. So that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I have to border on politics because it does affect the trading, and you know I try not to get in there as you know, like you said, I have a should have a good collection of hats. I have no MAGA hats. How's that? <laughs> uh, any rate, uh, but certainly it's primarily technical trading. And uh, so we're into candlesticks a lot. We're into understanding how to really properly use indicators to help confirm what you're thinking. Uh, and some other really odd uh, odds enhancers, a little probability helps, like looking at the Dow Jones transports and watching the Russells, not to play them but to understand where the market direction truly is. So we've been doing this for a couple of years, and uh, I've actually developed a lot of material for the students themselves, uh, non-OTA, and uh, uh, they really seem to respond to it. Other than that, I'm doing a little editing for uh, you uh -oh. <laughs> on the options courses oh, that yeah, you're yeah. doing. But that, that's kind of gotten quiet. What's going on with that? Uh, yeah, because the beauty of content, we, we, were, we were ripping through the on-demand options stuff, and then uh, Larry and a couple of the other instructors go, you know what? If we change it this way and teach this, this, and this, that'll make this much clearer and easier for people to understand and hopefully help people understand better. So we they shuffle they reshuffled the deck. But the good news, Mike, is I have a lot of videos gonna be coming your way here soon. So we're we're doing we're back on track, <laughs> we're ripping. Larry's recording tons, Carter's doing a lot of writing, I'm working on the production with Dave, so and, and Gary. So we'll have the options out there soon. Part one was done, but there's gonna be a little reshuffling and all of a sudden we'll have a much, much better class, I think. Good, good, good. Uh, Eagle Eye Mike is ready to find your mistakes. Oh, you guys, you guys don't know how bad I have it. So I, I do a lot of the on-demand recordings, and then I go in, and then Mike will send back a review, and God, it's horrible having somebody as good and attend, pay such great attention to detail. I'm always like, damn you, Mike, I hate you, but I love you. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Thursday, what time is your session? Uh, 8.30 Pacific uh, Daylight Time at this point. And I run for an hour to maybe two hours. Okay, nice. At eight thirty a.m. I'm assuming. A.m. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to move it up so we can do more live market trading, but I'm not willing to give up my trading. <laughs> yeah, hey, I can't say as I blame you. I mean, that's why I like doing the show at two o'clock. Markets close. I don't have to worry about anything. I have all my time for myself. Uh, Coach says, Mike, when are you going to do the options class? Are you going to do an options class? I don't teach options anymore. I just trade them. There you go. It's easier that way sometimes. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you sharing your experience with us. I, I hope that your uh, your IBM works out for you and your UPS. Yeah, well, I'm sure they will. Uh, <laughs> if not, all they're going to do is cost me a little tiny bit of money or make me a lot. Like that. That's good. To you and everybody out there, please stay safe, be well. Great to see you again, Merlin. Good to see you. I'll, I'll be bugging you to get you on more frequently, Mike. I know you're, you love talking about these, these markets, so I'm, I'm always glad to have you on. See you later. All right, take care. Guys, that was Mike McMahon, longtime instructor, long like Trading Academy. He is uh, doing Mastermind Clubhouse sessions, so if you guys are uh, around and doing that, he mentioned 8.30 Pacific time, uh, and every Thursday is when he's doing that one, and uh, Mike brings a particular perspective to the markets. He's always looking at different things, and I, I've worked with Mike for many, many years, so I hope you guys enjoy that one as well. Um, Boz says, Mike rocks the house on Thursday. Yeah, I have not been in. I I, I bring all these guests on, a lot of times they're, they're doing Mastermind or Clubhouse, and I have opportunities to go in there, but I'm always so busy, I just didn't get a chance to go in and join in the fun, so uh, unfortunately, I... I'll have to do that because Mike's just such a good guy. All right. Uh, if you have last-minute questions, feel free to send those on in. I'm going to run through what happened today and potentially tomorrow. Uh, we'll actually go out and look at some of the earnings that happened here in just a second. But let me get to the earnings calendar first. Here is what's happened today. Um, you guys remember I talked about these two numbers up here being very important, building permits and housing starts. Housing starts... Um, 
was worse than expectations, but it was better than last month. So all in all, that's a positive sign. Building permits were not only better than expectations and better than last month, but they were significantly higher. They came out, um, well, 30,000 higher on the building permits than was expected, which uh, that's a pretty darn good sign. So all in all, good for the US economic data. You still have a lot of the British information still gonna come out later on this evening. Uh, with regards to earnings calendar, here's what happened today. Netflix, not a good way to start off your, really your FANG stock rollout. They missed pretty badly. Uh, the estimate was supposed to be 213 per share. They came out at 174. We'll look at that chart here in just a second. Um, you had Lockheed Martin beat, you had Procter & Gamble beat. Uh, the one that really just blew my mind is Snap. Um, I, I don't get it. I mean, who, does anybody use Snapchat anymore? I mean, we're all 12 years old. I mean, how do you, this is this is where you used to send you know nudes to your friends and they, they couldn't capture them, they just erase, right? I mean, come on, who's using Snap anymore? I'll just go to a different time. Anyway, uh, I guess I'm just a grumpy old man. Uh, Philip Morris also reported earnings, Texas Instruments, but let's take a look at Netflix and Snap here before we get to tomorrow's calendar. Here is uh, NFLX. There's your daily of Netflix. Got a bunch of levels drawn on this bad boy, which are no longer relevant. Uh, if we go to uh, da, 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 the five minute, that should give me the. There you go. You guys can see it was it was down already on the day, but it, it fell from about 525 all the way to a low. In, in a five minute window, guys, it went from 525 to a low of 486. You're talking almost a $50 move in a period of five minutes. Brutal. Um, that is pretty ugly out there for Netflix. Again, not the best way to start the earnings season. Now, what makes this important is this is a much bigger weighting than somebody like Snap. Okay, here's Snapchat and their earnings. Um, just absolutely soaring right now. It, it, ridiculous. I, I can't believe this thing is still going. I, my guess is that someone will short the hell out of it tomorrow um, because, it, it, I don't know, I just don't see Snapchat surviving. To me, it was like a, a MySpace type of company it was just going to disappear and go away. But apparently not. It looks like it's just absolutely soaring today. So there you go with your Snapchat. Uh, those are your two that came out today. Let's go back to your economic calendar and earnings calendar information. Here's what's happening for tomorrow. Big day for Canada. You've got a lot of retail sales information, CPI numbers as well. So you get an inflationary reading for Canada as well as their spending. Um, for the US, there's not your typical announcements. It's just a couple of FOMC members speaking. You have crude oil inventories and then the beige book. All right. <laughs> and let me go. Oh, nope. Where is it? And here's what we have cooking for earnings for tomorrow. Tesla will be reporting earnings tomorrow. That is going to be you know, your, your popcorn trade of the day. Again, don't trade that thing. It's going to be too dangerous. It'll move too much, but it sure as hell be fun to watch. You have Verizon, Lamb Research, Ericsson, Align Technologies. That's in the Larry Jacobson portfolio. You have Kinder Morgan and Aber Abbott Laboratories reporting earnings tomorrow. Uh, shout out to Miles Davis, one of my favorite jazz musicians, uh, with the donation today. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, Big Eb says, Merlin, Bitcoin hit 11999 today. What do you think in the near future? Break 12000 off the races? Yes. Now, you guys know, obviously, I am biased on this one because I am holding a lot of Bitcoin, but I'm looking at it for the long haul, and I do think, let me bring up your Bitcoin chart for you. Here's the Bitcoin chart. Uh, we'll go full features. You guys can see that one. Um, on the five minute, it took a little bit of a dive. We actually did break 12,000 today, but I want to go back to the daily time frame. So we'll go to one day. Um, I mean, this move's been great. You know, you look at this big sharp move down that we saw early September, that obviously is a sign of panic, but the way that it's been building and building and building is very positive. Today, we did break above 12,000. If we zoom out a little bit here, there is a little bit of, of, of overhead issue. You know, we're coming right into area of supply that we saw in early September. Other than that, your next stop's gonna be 12.5, probably a little bit low, lower than that. After that, I think that you are going to see um, Bitcoin really continue to move up. And now a lot of altcoins not faring so well today, right? And they're just not really doing that great. Uh, you saw Ethereum down almost 3% to 368. I'll bring up that chart for you. You know, everyone's uh, keeps talking about Ethereum and how great it is. I, I do see the long-term potential for Ethereum, but Bitcoin, to me, that's the store of value. That's that digital gold aspect of it. And again, the limited supply um, is going to cause this one to move up. Ethereum does has unlimited supply, theoretically. So there is a challenge there with Ethereum that I just, I'm not a big fan of. But anyway, um, Bitcoin looking great. I do think you'll see it continue to move on up. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, taking notes to short snap. 
the aging new vine. Well, I don't know, Tom. I mean, maybe I'm just cynical. I just don't know anybody who uses Snapchat anymore. Who sends a snap? I mean, why you could just, I don't know. You could just record your video straight into your phone and send it. You know, there's there's other things. Um, Marco Polo and, and things like that might might be better in my opinion, but whatever. Uh, you are younger than anyone else with your positive energy. <laughs> well, I don't know if I could say my positive energy. A lot of people say I'm just a bitter cynic. So yeah, anyway. There's an alternative technology for blockchain. Uh, yes, there is. There's a lot of, of different technologies. Blockchain is one of the main ones, obviously. And it's just, if you think about what blockchain is, it's really just a way to store data, right? It's a, a process of solving a block of data. It goes to a chain and then it, everything's linked together. So if any of that data changes historically, it would completely break the chain. Therefore, there are systems in place to prevent that from happening. You have... Um, there's different array type of data management systems. There's also called what's a DAG, which is a uh, directed acyclic graph. You've also got hypermeshes. There are different technologies out there, none of which have uh, managed to supplant uh, blockchain. Uh, but if you look at something like Cardano, um, IOTA is one of the big ones that uses a, a DAG, or they call it the Tangle, which is just a different way of referencing markets, uh, referencing the data source and package and verification really complicated I know but um, yes there are other things out there other than um, looking at something like a blockchain and they're still working on making those work I, if you're really interested check out IOTA IOTA was one of the first to the market and basically what they wanted to be was the there's the internet of things and that's what IOTA was really intended to be for IOTA IOT uh, and it's a digital currency for, in theory, if we go forward, just fast forward 5, 10, 15 years, imagine a world where you won't have to order anything, right? Your refrigerator would have scanners inside and be like, oh, well, Merlin's low on almond milk today. I'm just going to automatically order auto, uh, almond milk. And he needs a six-pack of Sierra Nevada. And, oh, let's not forget the bottle of Blanton's. It'll order that stuff. My dishwasher will say, hey, I'm almost out of soap. I'll order it. My, my oven will buy oven cleaner or maybe even hire someone to clean my oven. All of that will be done with micropayments and digital payments that uh, will be much faster and more efficient on a decentralized network, something like IOTA. And they were trying to work for that. I, I see it coming. I do see in the near future these devices, you know, your light bulb blows and automatically your light bulb just goes, you know what? I'm going to order new light bulbs. You might even have them in your house already. It has a running inventory. Pretty soon it'll be just like a data management system all on some sort of blockchain. Now, if all of that information was on a blockchain like Bitcoin, it could never be scalable for the world. So you need something that has a lot more transactional volume. And when you look at a system like IOTA, the system actually gets more robust and faster the more people that are using it. So as it gets bigger, it actually gets better and faster. So that was an interesting one with IOTA. I do have a little bit of IOTA, but there you go. Yeah, Mike says the Jetsons. You know, I, I almost wanted to say sadly, yes, but is it sadly? You know, we can always uh, figure out what kind of devices we use and what we hook up to. So Lori, again, thank you so much for the contribution. You guys are awesome today. We appreciate that. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to have uh, Tilly. Tilly be back in the program. Uh, we looked at some of her levels over the weekend for the market outlook. I'm going to maybe ask her to do some analysis for some different markets because I know some of you have been asking. Do you have a specific market you want Tilly to analyze? I know um, the S&P is her forte. Oh, absolutely, that's her, her niche. But if there's something you guys want her to check out, uh, just type it down in the chat below or go to TraderMerlin.com. You can send in your comments and questions there. You can also go to, uh, I don't know, you guys at this point, you know how to get a hold of me and how to... Uh, how to send in your comments and questions. So do that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's show. If you did, do me a favor, give me a little thumbs up. You can also click the like button, comments down below the video, and hopefully I will see you all tomorrow with Tilly Allison Harris on the program. Take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. And watch out for that Tesla.